some great binders that our users have been creating, and we're so thankful to have some of our most prolific users here today sharing um, some of their work, one or two of their, their binders, and explaining to you how they use it in the classroom or with their colleagues. So we're very excited about that. And Barbara, I think you're on, so I'm going to let you say hello. Great. Yeah, we're, it's very fun to be here. And it's really fun to see the participants here, because I know a lot of you are LiveMinders users, and I've seen your names and tweeted with you before. So welcome. Um, so we're going to start with this newbie question, what is a live binder? So for those of you who don't know, a live binder is really just like a three-ring binder for the web. You can gather information from all over the web, whether it's web pages or videos, and upload documents from your desktop as well. And you can organize that information into tabs and subtabs. And it creates a handy URL that you can pass around or use as a presentation as you'll see today. So teachers are using live finders to collaborate and create lesson plans and to organize handout information for students and parents. And they're even using it as a way for students to do research and turn in paperless assignments. So you'll see some of this today as we explore some of these fabulous binders that our guests and others in the live binder community have created. So let's dive in and take a look at some of those binders. So Tina, who's our first guest? Okay, Barbara, Steve, are you there? I think all of you know Steve Anderson from Classroom 2.0. He's a very prolific tweeter. I'm sure all of you keep up with him. And he's also one of our most prolific binder creators. And he's going to share with us his binder on Twitter resources. And I'm just saying here, Kim, I don't know if you have a web tour or if I need to launch that. Let me see here. You can go ahead and launch it if you'd okay. like. Okay, I'm doing it right now. Whoops. Oh, should I do it down? Oh, so you have a window open down there. Okay. Yes, it's open now. So. Uh, Oops. What happened there? Did I just close it? No, it's still open. Okay, I can't see it on my screen. Let's see, where did it go? Okay. You might need to just minimize and maximize. But Steve, you have the mic, so you can go ahead and take over. Unless, okay, okay, over to you, Steve. Okay. Um, so while that's loading up, I'll just give you um, just a quick overview of who I am. Uh, my name is Steven Anderson, and I am a district instructional technologist in the Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools. I primarily work with our superintendent, our assistant superintendent, and the various other senior leadership folks, uh, our central office on technology integration. But I also do a lot in our district with teaching teachers, and that's really one of my favorite things to do. And I um, have been using Live Finders for a while. I absolutely love them because they are a perfect way to, um, to just share everything. That, that I need to share for a particular session. So I have lots of binders. I have one on you know, RSS. I have one on Google Docs. I have tons and tons and tons of them. In fact, I have um, one that I want to share with you on Twitter. That's not it. Where is it? For some reason, I've lost my web tour window. So I'm asking Robert to open up. Um, do you want me to? Um, I, ha I can open it in my browser and I can sh I can share it. Do you want me to do that? Um, we have the web tour window open. So Steve, all you need to do is click on the link that you want to click on and share. I know. I, I'm trying to find my binder. Ah, there it is. I just couldn't find it. That's all. Okay, I see mine now. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, there's that. So you're right there in front of Steve. Okay. Yep. So I create so I get um for those people who don't know, I, I do use um my I joke around a lot when people say, Oh, tweet and stuff like that. I do use Twitter. Um I love Twitter. Um I think prolific is a good word. Um, but I I don't know. Um uh, but I get asked all the time, you know, what are my favorite resources for 
um, for using Twitter or getting started with Twitter or understanding how to use Twitter. So um, one of the um, one of the things I did was to create this live binder of of um, Twitter resources. So just a quick go through. Um, uh, the links are in the, the chat if you want to take a look at the binder. But I just always like to start out with what um, what Twitter is, and so I've got um, a little bit of, uh, of an infographic here. I have several videos here. Um, they're all on YouTube, but you can find them. One of my favorite. So, is Twitter what are you doing? English. It's um, one of the first questions. I like the Twitter in 60 seconds. There's another. Wow, Twitter uh, in 60 seconds. Uh, and then I get a little bit into terminology. Uh, that seems to be a place where people can get stuck and they don't understand. You know, like what is a you know what is a retweet? Um, you know, what does it mean to reply? What are direct messages? Um, obviously, the Twitter website where you go to sign up. But then moving past that, you know, what do you need to know to get started? The seven things you should know from Educause is one of my uh, one of my favorite resources about Twitter because it really breaks down into its simplest points the the seven things you should know all about Twitter. Um, the art of retweeting is another one, um, but really I think the the most important thing to understand is hashtags because hashtags are, are the, the place where people can start without actually jumping onto Twitter. So I was teaching a class of our English uh, our English high school folks uh, last week and I split the session into two different days because the first day I showed them how to use Twitter without using Twitter, we basically look at hashtags. So we look at the, the EdChat hashtag, we looked at in, the InChat hashtag, um, and how to find different resources through various hashtags. And you can use all of those things without actually signing up for Twitter. And I think if people do use the searches and they understand how to use the hashtags and how to find information, then they will are more likely to, when they do sign up, find a value in the service. If you just sign them up and then we put them out there, it, it, it can be very daunting and very off-putting. So if we start out and say, hey, you know, you can use all of the wealth and resources of Twitter without actually jumping in at first, then I think we're, we're, we're able to find buy-in. So I have a lot of information about hashtags. Lists are another good place to start, so I have a lot of information about lists. Um, the Complete User's Guide to Twitter, which is on Scribd, is another uh, a great a great resource. And I think it's important to talk about the misconceptions. There's a lot of misconceptions about what Twitter is and what Twitter isn't, and so highlighting those mis uh, those misconceptions. And then I get into the the Twitter and education um, resources that I have. So um, you know, just simply you know, 101 ways to teach with Twitter, getting your network off the ground, um, using Twitter to facilitate classroom discussion. That's a big um, a, a big one right now that we're doing in my district. Um, and then nine reasons Twitter, a, a teacher should Twitter, a teacher's guide to Twitter. So all of these resources that teachers need if they want to start using Twitter in their classroom. Um, you know, the other thing is if we're going to start using these resources either with our teachers or our kids, it's important that teachers understand, uh, or our parents understand what Twitter is. So having parents know what Twitter is and what Twitter isn't, again, um, and then having um, parents understand that there are resources out there for them. So the PBS Twitter account um, is, is a good one. Uh, my, my wife, who doesn't use Twitter, uh, is a teacher, and we have a two-year-old daughter, and so she uses the PBS uh, parents account to find um, a lot of good information. Um, the, and then the parents guide to Twitter, helping them understand that. And then, of course, keeping how to keep kids safe online. More resources. This is my uh, my Digo account, which has uh, roughly in the neighborhood of about 200 to 250 different links um, uh, for Twitter resources. And then um, one of my um, favorite bloggers, Bill, um, who's a teacher in Raleigh, just up the road from me, has a couple of articles that I've included here about Twitter as a professional development tool. And when I um, when I travel and speak and I talk to districts all over, that's, I really advocate for Twitter being used as a professional development tool. So Bill, in, his, in this one post, says exactly what, what I try and get districts um, to do so eloquently, so I've included that there. Um, another one that I've added um, is one from Mike Zimmer, who uh, is a good friend of mine, that he has a great post about what to do when you're new. And then one I just added just a few minutes ago was another post from Bill about how Twitter can save you time, and this is a really eloquent example of, um, of how Bill put out a tweet and within 30 minutes on Twitter had an answer to a, 
to a question that, that he posed. So that's the Twitter binder. It, it changes and updates all the time. Um, and I always love to, to add things to it. So if you have anything, feel free to, to tweet me or to, uh, to send me a message. Steve, that was great. Um, thank you for sharing that. You know, what is great about this binder is, is it illustrates how when you are uh, a, a, a person who is a resource for your colleagues or even as a teacher in a classroom and you know that you've done the homework to go find out various um, articles or interesting websites that someone else might be interested in and people are always asking you, you know, what is the resource, uh, what is the best resource so I don't have to go do the homework. And Stephen has a perfect example here where he can put all of his resources into a binder and then share the binder with others. And he can continually add to them even now as people are looking at them and delete things like you would in a three-ring binder. So this is a great example of how live binders can be used with your colleagues or with your classroom as a place to put resource information. So thank you, Steve, for sharing that, that binder with us. So the next user that we have um, is KB Connected, Karen, who um, has an enormous library of resources that she shares with teachers and that teachers can also use in the classroom. So Karen, um, I think you know that if you click on the link here, it'll launch the Live Finder. So let me do that for you and then I'll have you take over. Hi, Karen. Good morning. Good morning. So great to have you here. Great to be here. I'm. I don't see the um. Which one I should click on? I have Classroom 2.0 and Live Binders webinar on my screen. Okay. Um. And which one is yours? I was, well, I was going to do the, um, this is KB. A, oh, okay. Yeah, KB Connected. Okay. Still not seeing it. Okay, go ahead and talk and we'll find it. And Peggy and I will get the link posted. Okay, sure. Um, the first one I was going to talk about, well, good morning, everyone. The first one I was going to talk about was my amazing um, animal webcams. And this is a, um, a binder that I created for the students. I learned about a webcam on Twitter. We, we went to it. It was amazing. We were viewing eagles. And um, a couple of days later, viewing it again, there was uh, an egg in the nest. And the kids were so engaged with this. They loved it. OK, now, I, now I'm seeing the binder. This is classroom printables. I was wondering if we could see the amazing animal webcams. Or should I go to classroom printables? Oh, thank you. OK, um, I'll talk a little bit about it while this loads up. The webcams are all live streaming um, video, so it's actually happening at the time that the students are um, looking at it. They are so engaged. This, people are glued to the screen watching this, what these animals are doing. Um, We've used it, I teach art, and we, we've used it to do drawings. We're um, graphing things that we've um, found out about. It's, it's just incredible. And the students have been taking the binders back to their classrooms, or opening them up in their classrooms. And oh, great, here's the screen. And using them. The first tab I can show you, that is our school blog. So I did put it on there, and if you um, can see at the, towards the bottom of this, I put the binder on there, but I also have links to some of the webcams. If you go to, oh, this here are screenshots that my students have taken um, while we were watching the birds. Okay. Um, then I also have a fun, yeah. I, I was just going to say, if you click on tour guide, I think that you can navigate the oh, web page. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The birds, um, the Decorah Iowa Eagles, they have an, um, 
an egg in their nest. The Oliver and Olivia barn owls, they have an egg. Hummingbird has an egg. So we're just waiting for all these to hatch. Another tab is the Africa tab. We've found out that we can use this in the morning because it's nighttime um, later on in the afternoon. Kids are loving that. I put some tips here for viewing the animal webcams. And then the last tab um, is the assorted animal webcams, and there's just a few different ones. Really interesting, the black bear den, there is a black bear in there. We've seen his face a couple times, and we believe there might be a cub in there also. So that was um, the animal webcams. Kids love this, and we have done so many activities with them. Their teachers love it. Fantastic. I'm going to go back now over to the, if I can get, I don't know how to get to the, Click on the back arrow button up at the top there. There you okay. go. Okay. Now go to invited users. Oh, okay. See so that? Oh, it's a little different than yesterday. Okay. Yes, I changed it around oh, okay. because okay. I'm making okay. you guys the top story here. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Um, I'm clicking on classroom printables, mm -hmm. and this is a binder that I made for teachers. Um, for teachers to use in their classroom, and everything in this binder is free. The first tab is my blog, which I always put my blog on the um, any binders that I make. I get a lot of traffic to my blog this way, plus my blog is really connected with live binders because I love live binders. Um, see, the first tab is the um, teacher and management tools. If you click on the first one, back to school checklist, that's what it is. It's a back to school checklist. Um, just makes life easier. You don't have to create your own checklist. You can use this one, check off the things that you want your students to um, bring to school. You can use it anytime. You can use it after um, the winter break if they need to bring in more supplies. We also have, there's a borrowed item checklist. It's great because lots of times I know in my room I have people borrowing stuff all day long from the art room and I have them fill this out and then I'll get the stuff back. There's also um, newsletters that you can um, get. And like I said, I'm not going to click on these because it will just take too much time. But you can click, and all everything in here is free. The next tab that I wanted to show you is um, Customize and Create. All of these are really neat because you can customize. Oh, let's see. The custom, this one is Free Principal custom, Customizable Calendars. And you can use this. Your students can use this. They can make all sorts of um, different kinds of calendars. You can use it. Um, I'm going to skip the next two tabs and move over to phonics. And I think it's freezing up a little bit here. So I'll just talk about it. The phonics is really how I got started on the classroom principles because I was teaching a second grade um, reading class and I did not have that many um, resources being the art teacher. So I started collecting resources, phonics and that, and I had tons, and then I saw there was so much other things out there that um, now I'm seeing Africa cams. But there's so much, so much stuff out there that's free for teachers. It's incredible. And Live Binders is a fabulous way to keep it all together and organized. Um, one, I think my, is, oh, okay, here I'm back. Um, the next one that I want to talk about is, let's see, oh, I'll, let me show you the phonics and the phonics. I put my phonics binder in the phonics, in the classroom principles binder. So you can get my whole binder for phonics by going to classroom principles also. A couple more things. If you go to the social studies tab, just a, uh, I'm going to show you this. If you click on, um, some of these tabs, you'll have to view whatever comes up outside of the binder you, to print it. Let's see, this one's not coming up. Well, but I think Tina and um, Barbara, we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. Another thing, um, the flashcards, one, oh, now here it is. This is what it looks like. Maybe I'm talking too fast. Um, this one says that you ca it can't be open. You know, it can't be open in this window. So you just click on the link, and it will open it outside of the binder. It'll still be in the binder, but to view it, you need to um, view it in the binder. Certificates are quite interesting. 
all sorts of certificates. Parents can use these. Teachers can use these. Um, some of them are really neat the way they print out. You'll get two to a page, which is really nice for saving paper. Um, there's no homework coupons. This one is really nice. This one does, the one that just came up, Attitude and Character. It'll print out two certificates. The, another one here is trophies. You can customize these trophies, and you can put, type in whatever information you want to um, appear on the trophy. And maybe I'll just go down and show you one more, um, the behavior one. I work at a school for kids who have behavior problems, and this is one that my teachers at the school go to all the time because we're always setting up um, goal charts or um, different things like that. I really found the apology notes really nice because this way the person doesn't necessarily have to say it to the person but they can write it down and a lot of kids do like to do it that way so this is one binder that you know, I put together and it's all free resources for teachers there's nothing in here that anyone would have to pay for okay I think that's all for me that was great Karen thank you so what is really nice about the binders that Karen creates is that teachers can then have them at their disposal, at spo disposal to use as resources in their own classroom. So if they know that they want to do a printout, for example, for a holiday or maybe do certificates, then, then they know they can go to Karen's Binder and, and not have to do their own searching for it. They can just go straight to the tab that has the items that they need. And, and Karen has created all kinds of resources for that kind of purpose. So thank you, Karen, for sharing just two of your many binders um, with us today. So what I think I'm going to do, um, let me see if I'm been given back the, the tour down lead. I've just lost that binder there. Right, go ahead and reopen it because somebody closed it. Okay. So our next so one, just, uh, Becky, if you're there, I know we didn't go through this yesterday, so let me um, get the web link and put that up there. I will launch this for you and maybe I will navigate. Well, let's see. No, it's not Becky. It's Dawn. Hold on one second. Okay, it should load now. Okay, does everybody see that? Okay. Dawn, I'm going to get you ready here. Okay, and actually, I think I can um, try to launch it in okay. the sharing application if you'd like me to try that. Oh, right, that's, oh, right, that's right, because there's a private, private access binder. Access okay, so we'll let you do we'll that. Let you do that. So Dawn is um, actually, so you're um, a professor at Kansas State University, University, but you're sharing with us a binder with that you work with, um, with your son, correct? With your son, correct? Yes, and actually I'm not a professor, um, but I'm the technology coordinator at Career and Employment Services at Kansas State. I love live binders and I use them all the time, um, and a lot of mine are private because they're sharing information um, within our office, but we also do for some of our Kansas State Student University students as far as a resume guide um, and some links and guidings to career fairs, how they prepare for career fairs and how they can network with employers and those kinds of things. So what I'm showing now though is more as a parent, um, a, a book report that my son recently did for his classroom and it, we just wanted to try something a little bit different. So I checked with his teacher and she said that was fine. And so we use live binders. And one of my favorite things about live binders is that it's a way to incorporate lots of other applications and aggregate all that together and put it in an organized fashion to share with, with students or with teachers. So for this, he chose to do a book trailer. And um, you'll notice on the screen now what I've, I'm on the welcome tab. And I like to usually put a, a graphic on there as well as just a brief what to expect. I like the way that you can add text to a live binder so that you can frame what people should expect to see in it and, and explain what's going to be happening. And so I'm now clicking on the book trailer video. And we used Animoto to create this. So what he did is, is chose 
scenes from the book that were important and then drew those he liked to draw, so that was a nice way to incorporate one of his interests into this. And then we scanned those and loaded them into Animoto and created a video, added music to it. So that was that ended up being his final product, which is only about 54, 55 seconds, but there was a lot of work that went into it. So what he did after, after we actually made it is he, he kind of kept a journal as we went along, and so we created a behind-the-scenes tab so that he can share with his um, teacher and his fellow students what it is he did to make his book trailer. So this explains the process that he used. And this is really good, I think, as a parent, um, to see him be able to reflect on, on his work, and then also to create something that in the future he can um, use for project strategies on how he would prepare for another project um, as well. And the Live Binders makes it nice because it just puts everything together. And then you can also, of course, pull in URLs from Wikipedia and other any, any site. So this is a nice way for him to highlight the series, and if anybody else is interested in um, looking at this, they can go through and get more information. And then a Meet the Author tab and inserted a video on that. I love the text um, on the left side here where you can add an opinion or pull out something that's interesting um, to you as a student. Um, so I think that that's a really fabulous thing that I absolutely love about Live Binders. And then the last tab on this binder is a video troubleshooting so that um, I wasn't sure how familiar his teacher was with Animoto and sometimes the videos can stick and so this is a way to help her through that ahead of time so that she could get the video prepared for when he wanted to show it to his class. Um, what I'd be interested in is if teachers would be willing to work with students at some time in a collaboration mode since that feature is available in Live Finders and that is to comment, um, for instance, I'm clicking on the behind the scenes tab again which it pulls up a PDF of the report with all of his slides and drawings that he did for the video and to then be able to use the left navigation bar so that teachers could provide guidance or guiding questions um, to help students in the process of a project, whether it be early on or, or mid-process. Mid so anyway, that is how we've used it as a student um, to present and the other great thing about um, Live Binders is that it's a great presentation tool as well. So it's organized, it's ready to go, it's easy, one link, and then he can share all the information with his classmates and his teachers. So thank you for your time today. Thank you, Don. That was excellent. Couldn't have said it better myself. Um, I think Don brought up a really good point that we didn't mention before, but when Live Binders was created and and the idea of creating a digital three-ring binder where you can collect digital content, like web links. Um, you can also upload your documents, so your PDFs, your Word documents, your Excel spreadsheets, your images, and combine them with the web documents that you find on the web. But one of the most important things about what why we created Live Binders was to provide a way to present this information. What's the best way that teachers can present a whole bunch of resources together. So the presentation aspect was important in the design of Live Finder. So thank you for bringing that up. So let me see here. We need to move along. We've got so many great examples here. And I am just going to click to Social Justice Live, and that's Mike Fisher. Mike, Mike are you there? I think I'm here. Can you hear I me? Thank you. Yes, perfectly. I think everyone knows. <laughs> So you are that you are a curriculum mapping specialist, if I get that correct, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to hand the mic over to you and see if I can get that, that website up. <laughs> All right. Um, I do want to let you know I don't have, when you pull up your internet, I don't have, like, access to change anything. Like, I can't, or no, well, there it gives me follow the moderator. Um, but I can talk about it without necessarily having to navigate it if we need to, so. Okay, well, I might navigate it for you. Um, that would be great. Um, there's the, there's the link there. Okay. All right. Please. It does give me access to being tour guide, but I'm fine with you navigating if you want to do that. Okay. Well, let me um, launch this for you. You tell me if you see it. Okay. And then I'll shut my mic off. It should be appearing now. Does everyone see it? I see Classroom 2.0 and Live Binder Show and Tell. Okay. Well, I just hopefully it's going to open up soon. 
Okay, while that's opening up, uh, my name is Mike Fisher, and I am an instructional coach and uh, educational consultant, um, founder of the Digigogy Collaborative at digigogy.com, and I'll give the links and stuff for that after I'm done. But um, <clears throat> I do a lot of work with instructional technology, curriculum mapping, transforming curriculum, upgrading curriculum in the wake of you know the the skills that we want our kids to have to be productive and competitive um, global members of society. And I, I use live binders a lot, um, and I use it for multiple purposes. And you've seen some of those purposes already today uh, to interact with Web 2.0 tools, to just collect information. And um, in this particular live binder that uh, you're looking at now, Social Justice Live, this is the result of a virtual instructional coaching moment that I was having with a teacher in North Carolina. I'm in New York, and he had a need to upgrade uh, the writing that his students were doing, but he wanted them to have uh, an experience that um, was a little more than just the four walls of the classroom. So we talked about different um, Web 2.0 tools that were available, and we decided that we were going to open this up to a global audience and we thought that live binders would be the best way to collect our interactive elements. Um, I do want to say that uh, this took some, there, there, was, there was a learning curve to this because we had to, I had to teach him how to use Wallwisher, Today's Meet, uh, Ustream, uh, as well as live binders. And so there were a couple of things that, that had to be done in the background before we got to the live binder here. And I'm sure that will come up in the questions again later. But um, Tina, if you could click on cyberbullying. The four issues that are in this tab, okay, uh, cyberbullying, discrimination, child abuse, and immigration, these were all justice issues that were identified by the students in a Google Doc, uh, a Google form, uh, where they talked about um, through a survey which issues were, would be the main ones that they would want to engage with in a, a format like this. So we chose the top four. And for each of those, we created a Today's Meet Room, a Wall Wisher, and a Google Doc so that the kids could collect information. The Live Binder was just about collecting the information and not necessarily about making connections yet uh, because the, the assessment for what they did here was to come after um, what, what was happening here. Um, just as an aside, too, I watched an interesting uh, TED Talk video from a woman named Diane Laufenberg uh, last night that someone sent out over Twitter, and she talked about uh, how instruction um, used to live in the one-room schoolhouse, and um, there was we had what was called information scarcity, and now we have information surplus, information overload. And so the kids can get to all of this information. What they don't understand is how to make connections between it, organize it, think critically about it, collaborate with it, communicate around it. And that's what um, doing something like this um, helps them to do. So I'm going to click on tour guide and see if I can take control of the binder because it doesn't look like it's switching for me. If I click on the cyberbullying tab, did that click for everybody? I, I don't know. It's, it's appearing for me, obviously, because I'm clicking on it. I clicked on today's meet, and that was able to show up. But it, I don't, can anybody give us some feedback on whether you guys are seeing it? Okay. Um, well, according to Peggy, people can click through this if they want to. Uh, just just a heads up, it's already running a little bit slow, and Wallwisher itself is a slower service. So uh, you may want to click on the today's meet or the Google Doc if you want to see something quickly. Um, otherwise, all of this is available after we're done here so that you can see what's going on. Anyway, we, Im we embedded this, these interactive elements so that the kids could talk about uh, with the world at large um, their, what their thoughts are around these issues. And we tweeted this out. We blogged about it beforehand. So we had people from multiple countries, um, multiple places around the United States. We even had a, um, a global education conference that was happening out in Seattle at the same time they started sending us messages in the middle of this, and the kids just went bananas. Um, they had, the kids hadn't participated in something like this before, and the teacher was a little bit um, apprehensive about how it was going to work, but they were engaged. They were in it to win it from the moment we started, and they really did well uh, during that. Um, if you click on the tab Student Blogs, 
uh, specifically the ones for Fifth Block. That's the group that I actually visited uh, when I was visiting North Carolina last Monday. Um, the student blogs, um, it looks like you have to sign in with a, a Google Doc account, but you can get to uh, a list of their blogs and see what they're writing about at this point around this Social Justice Live event. And then once you have that, that's where we can start looking at um, how the writing process is going, what ideas they had for writing, any issues that they're having with grammar and punctuation, the presentation of, of their writing, all the different writing elements that you would look at um, that, that would be evaluated uh, in a traditional writing activity, but now we've upped this 10 notches and we're making it globally interactive. And if you think about those uh, P21 standards uh, from P21.org, uh, we're, we're engaging in collaboration, we're engaging in communication with each other and the world, we're asking the kids to reorganize and critically think about information that's going on, and we're asking them to do a little bit of exploration here. Um, and I think being able to engage all of those skills using just one tool like Live Binders is very, very helpful, and I think it, it makes working in this way less overwhelming for teachers that are already overwhelmed with uh, the the 21st century way of doing things. Is that getting um, overused now, 21st century? <laughs> um, but this is just one of the ways that, that I've used live binders, and I just did this a week and a half ago, um, and it just it just happened to get a lot of hits, and uh, we've had a lot of uh, global participation within it, and I'm glad that it's useful for everybody. And my, um, if you click on my name, the where it says binder author, you can actually get to everything that I have saved in Live Binders, which is quite a bit. Um, it, it makes it look like I'm on Live Binders 24 hours a day, but um, I assure you, it's it's just so useful and so easy to do. I can whip one up uh, very quickly, and I hope that if you haven't tried one before, because we had a significant part of our audience uh, that that hadn't tried this, I hope that when we're done today you'll go try one because it really is, it's great for presenting information, it's great for collecting information, it's great for sharing information with kids, it's great for online portfolios, steps in a process, um, or something interactive like Social Justice Live. So, and thank you to Tina and Barbara and everybody here for letting me share today. Thank you, Mike. Did a great job once again. I think you brought up uh, another good point, which is, you know, one of the reasons, again, that we thought about the live binder interface is because there are so many different resources out there and so many ways to, to create documents that it can get overwhelming for a teacher. In fact, when I was designing this, I actually sat in a classroom and watched a teacher try to open up many different applications, and, and it was an amazing thing juggling act. So what we hope to do with live binders is to bring it all in one place so that there is some structure with all the content that you use today and collect today. So that was um, a great presentation. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. So let's see. We're moving right along here. I know our time is almost up. Um, and our next presenter, let's see. Am I missing? Oh, I know, Becky, we're going to show your, you are here today. So I'd love to share your Web 2.0 Project Finder if you're able to come on. I'm going to pick. I'm here, here if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. So you um, did a great summary binder, which I think was for the year-end of student projects that went on at your school. And you were the librarian there um, in Colorado at the East Middle School, is that right? Yes. Um, I'm Becky Johnson, and I'm the teacher librarian at East Middle School in Grand Junction, Colorado. And um, I'm not seeing my live binder come up, so I'm assuming you're going to load it. Yeah, that. I'm working on it here. I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. Um, um. And, and I actually, I did put this uh, live binder together as a celebration of student work. I've also used it as a presentation tool at um, several conferences and unconferences.
Okay, um, so I'm seeing my Web 2.0 projects binder come up. Um, I use a lot of Web 2.0 tools with various projects that the kids are doing in the library. And I also, I guess I would call myself maybe the um, technology integration person at my school. So I work a lot with classroom teachers so that they can incorporate Web 2.0 tools. Uh, so what you're seeing here is just a collection of student work. I know as a teacher, one thing that I always like to see is how students always use these Web 2.0 tools. It's hard for me to envision really how things are going to work until I see what a student does with it. So at East Middle School, we are enthusiastic <laughs> about using different Web 2.0 tools. And I think when I present this to uh, in conferences and, and to other librarians, I like to say that live binders are tailor-made for librarians because a lot of what I do is collect resources. Uh, I make them available for students. In this case, the kids are always thrilled when their work is featured in the Web 2.0 project binder. Uh, they always uh, ask if their work can be featured, and I do change things around. Hi, I'm Noah Graff. In math, we took pictures of statues in downtown Grand Junction. This voice thread will introduce you to various geometrical okay, shapes. So what you're this picture here. shows an example of parallel okay. lines. So which tab are you clicking on? Because we may need to navigate people. So okay, I'm not, I am not clicking on any tab. <laughs> so I, I will try to do that. So I've got um, basically here, and I'm not sure if this is showing up for other people, um, but I've got uh, a variety of blogs. We've done persuasive writing in the form of blogs. One thing I love about LiveBinder is that you can put an explanation over in one um, text column, and then the app, whatever you're doing, loads up live. And so in uh, these different blogs, you can see that I've got uh, the blogs of persuasion. These are blip discussions where kids uh, blog about uh, literary short stories that they've read. Um, I do have a voice thread here. And again, it's so nice to have things show up right there in the window. So the kids often tour these. Uh, they like to see their own work there. I use it when I am giving instructions. Hi, I'm Noah Gr I'm going to shut Noah off there. Um, so you can play the app right there when I'm showing. So when I am teaching, I will actually open up the Live Finder. I will show kids examples. I will say, here's an example of a voice thread. Here's what you need to think of. Um, I didn't load up too many examples. I, I like to use this as a showcase. So um, I'm not sure what else. Um, I've got a variety of wikis. And so now I'm on the wikis tab. I have, again, I try to focus exclusively on student work. And so this is an example of, I'm clicking right now in wikis on the Cheetah Writing Wiki sub-tab, which shows a student page. And I saw something in the, in the chat room that asks if you can create a page or something for a student that you could keep private. I'm not sure about that. We try to make our work as public as possible. So um, even in draft form, if we are using wikis or we are showing uh, different student work, we will try to um, really focus on the uh, you know student work even in process. We share this with parents. Um, I've got again. I love that an Animoto will play right within the tab. Um, we've got photo peaches with book trailers. So this is just an example of a live binder that showcases student work. Another way as a librarian that I like to use live binders is to build collections of um, book recommendations. I have a live binders that has all of the teen top 10 nominees. 
and I embed in those uh, in those kinds of live binders links that go directly to my um, online pub, uh, my online library catalog, so that the students can see where the book is located in the library. They can actually, with our OPAC, they can reserve the book. They can put a hold on it. They can also log in and leave reviews. So it's really great as a librarian to have this resource. Well, this is great, Becky. This is um, usually one of the first binders that I show because the students' work are, are so great. And if anybody out there has a chance to take a look at the voice thread and the Anamoto videos um, in her binder, they're really inspiring pieces of work by these students. But what's nice about this um, is, like you said, it, it, it can take many different Web 2.0 applications and put them together in, in one context. So this is a great example of a, a year in the life at your school. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And it's always fun to see, see students work. So um, I think what I'm going to do now is move into some other example binders that um, we don't have, we couldn't, weren't able to get a hold of everybody, but I can certainly run through and share a couple more if we have time, or we can do questions. So if you guys want to let me know what One you want to do. One pressing question that um, keeps coming up before we officially close the show is the, uh, are questions about the student accounts? Do they have to um, create separate student accounts, or can you just use one teacher's account? How is that best structured? Oh, that's a good question. And we're thinking about like having a moderator account so that teachers can sign up a bunch of kids. We don't have that now. And we do ask for email only because if a student loses their password, then you know we need a way to send it to them. But if you have a group of students that don't have email addresses, contact us directly and we'll help you with that. And one thing T, uh, Lee Colbert shared is if you needed an email account that doesn't go anywhere but just for an account to sign up, you can use whatever name at example.com, and that will never be um, an email, an actual email account, but you can use it to serve as a placeholder for that field um, to do the uh, set up the student accounts if they're 13 years um, or under under 13 years old. Yeah, and I think the only issue is if they lose their password. We just need a way to get a hold of them, and we don't right. have a, a moderator account, but that's something that we are going to work on. And if you want to let me know that you've done that, then we can keep track of it that way. So if there are teachers that want to do that, please contact Tina or Barbara at support at livebinders.com. And students with a Google account could, could also have their own binder as well and set these up. Yes, you could definitely use that. Sherry as well, the Gmail um, tool for the 25 or 30 students with a teacher's email account. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out this session today since we're uh, coming to an end, but we do hope that you will stay on and continue uh, to ask questions of our special guests today. And we want to let you know that uh, we have some great things coming up in March. And Steve Hargadon has some interviews coming up this next week. He's going to be talking with Jim Klein on social networking on Wednesday and a group of people, a great panel discussion on unschooling. If you follow the Innovative Educator, we had her on our show um, a while back, Lisa Nielsen. So um, she'll be on that panel with Steve this week. And once you exit the session today, a survey link will open in your browser automatically. It is, you have info filled out from our previous chat, and they have recordings already there in their portfolio. Um, and if you follow Dean Mantle on Live Binders, he has tons and tons of binders, just like Mike and Steve and everybody here in the group. So on the survey, when that link comes up, please put in that information as well on future guests 
he will be awesome that you'd like to see. You can also request a professional development certificate today um, and see if your district or, or school will accept it. I know teachers also just put this on the wall to demonstrate to their students that they are continuing uh, professional development for themselves. If for some reason the cert you didn't get that information and put your name and email address in the survey, then you can email us at live at classroom20.com. But all you need to do is in that section about do you want a certificate, put your name and email address. The bottom part is for Illuminate, the very last part. That's not how you request the certificate. It's the section just before it asks for if you want Illuminate to contact you. Regardless, if that doesn't open, you can always email us live at classroom20.com. Give us a few days to get the survey results from Illumini, and Peggy will send those out to you in your email. Dean Mantz, it's D-M-A-N-T-Z-7. That's his uh, username on Live Binders and Twitter and Plurk and uh, lots of places. And we also have a Classroom 2.0 Live iTunes U channel that Peggy helped us secure. And to open that directly in iTunes U, you just go to tinyurl.com slash cr20live iTunes U, all one word, cr20live iTunes U. That will open up directly into your iTunes, uh, and you can take us with you. You can take the entire chat log, MP3 and MP4, of every session that we have, and we post all of those resources and the live binder links for every week as well on our blog on the live.classroom20.com website that I'm going to post here in a bit. We want to give a very special thanks to Barbara, Tina, Stephen, Don, Mike, Karen, Rebecca, everybody in the chat that has uh, cre shared LiveBinder examples in the conversation today, and especially to Steve Hargadon, who is the founder of Classroom 2.0 and Future of Education, and to Learn Central and to Eliminate for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week. And I know that everything is just going by so quickly. Just remember that all of these things will be posted to our website on the archives and resources page, and you can you and follow those up at any time and share those with anybody and you can share the entire video recording of our Illuminate sessions as well as download them to your MP3 and MP4 players. So now we're going to go ahead and take some more questions and go back to the game. Yeah, it, the chat has gone too fast, so it's going to be impossible. This is one that's going to definitely be shared and viewed, and you can share the recording link. We'll post that on Twitter um, and on our blog page as well. And some people were talking, uh, Tina, if you could talk about the collaboration feature and ways that you can copy some of these to your desktop. And I can talk about that as well if you'd like and do application sharing, uh, Tina. And uh, we can show how they can collaborate and share these different binders. Okay, so I've been posting the links to the binder that we showed today, which has everyone that presented plus other binders that we were going to present today. Is that what you're talking about? And then what, I guess what we can do, I, I'm not sure how to open it in application mode, but I can try. And then I can do it if you just want to go ahead. If, if that's the the six eight, sure. if that's the one you want to show, I'll do it right now. Well, it'll show all the binders that were shown, plus the ones that we didn't get to yes. today, and all our users I'll out there. I'll do that right that, now. That um, are out. I know that are out there that like um, some of the binders that that are in there they could have presented, but we didn't get to them. So sorry about that. Just so much stuff going on and so little time. I know it. I know. I'm having trouble getting it to access my browser, but can we just, there it is. So that might be the best we'll way to do it. We'll do it as quick loading. You can continue talking. Okay. And I don't know, Barbara, if you want to come on and answer some of these questions since I've been hogging the mic here. And if you look on the, the application share, I just clicked on my name because I'm logged into my account, and it's going to take me um, back to the main site. 
Okay, well, we can just take a look at that. So if, if people want to mm -hmm. copy this binder, you scroll down all the way down to the bottom and go left. You'll see comments and copy. So if you click, if you have an account at Live Binders and you click on copy um, in that binder, it will copy that binder to your account. And what it does is it takes a hard copy of it. So if the owner of that original binder adds a new link, you won't see that link. But whatever is in the state of that binder at that time, you will have a copy of it. And down here is the copy function. Right. You copy it. And you can also share it via email, clerk, Twitter, um, all of these things, Facebook. And you can show it in just a presentation mode that's outside of your browser as well. Um, these are yeah, great so things. But you just copy it like she was saying. And you'll notice it says copy to my binder shelf complete. So then when I go to the top, I can rate this. Or I can go to like my area. And this is what you were referring as like your bookshelf, your binders. Right. So everybody has their own library that they can put their binders on and that's what it looks like. And Mike brought up a good point. I mean, if the author the author may not want you to copy their binders. So if the copy link is not there, it's probably because they don't want it to be copied. So there's not much what you can do there. But we are working on a way that you can have a favorite shelf um, if that's a concept where you can um, put somebody else's binder on a sh on your shelf under um, under the favorites category, and that's coming up. We don't have that available now. And when you start a new binder, you'll click Edit Menu if you've already had a binder. But this is where you can upload your different files and insert your tabs. Um, you can decide how you want it, if you want it public and copyable, or not copyable and private, and so forth. So. Um, you can determine it that way. You can change the different colors, your thumbnail. You have a variety of things that you can add in for each tab. To add a new tab, you can uh, use these options right here. Or you can click this little arrow, and you also get those same options to add in the, the, the tabs in your live binders. And then when you're finished, you just save it, and then it's can uh, post it out there, and I have several that I've just copied to like my shelf, and I've created one myself on web conferencing. But um, you can see that these are the the ones that are just sitting in my shelf, all of the different copies. And there's some, and it tells you page views and some stats. And you can start a blank binder. You can share your shelf with people so that other people can kind of like subscribe and see what you're sharing. And you'll see if it's private. Obviously, it says private right there, and to let you know that it's it wasn't shared, um, and so forth. So you can. And they have to, in order to see those things, they have to enter a, a key. And you can set up the password, the, the key, to be whatever you'd like in certain instances that are um, private and require the access. Well, some of the ones that Becky showed earlier, um, she needed a key because there was student information shared on some of those things. So um, sometimes you, you can set that up to protect it. Parents can see different things, but the entire uh, people on the internet cannot access those things. And well, uh, let's see, we have a question. Paula, we'll give you the mic. Go ahead, Paula. Hi, everyone. Um, I kind of missed it. I was um, chit-chatting with a friend. Um, I teach <laughs> fourth grade, and I was wondering about how students that are that don't have their own email accounts get to use live binders. I'm sorry if this is a repeat. You can set up like a, a generic email account or the or go through your Gmail like username plus part of your Gmail account, or you can do like student at example dot com. And example dot com is like any number on the movies five five five. 
it'll never be a valid email address, and so you can use that as a placeholder. Or you can contact Tina and Barbara at LiveBinders, and they can help you set that up if you have password issues. Um, so that's really the only thing that the email account is really needed for, to be able to send password reminders. But those are ways that you can structure and add in student accounts. And if you click on the details over here, um, you'll see uh, citations and the sources that are used in the different binders. Um, so if there's like a whole a whole bunch of binders that I have listed here, you'll see that it's showing the different credit sources. And then you can just scroll down the page to see each. Uh, okay, I'll type the, the iTunes U chat link in and you can see when it was added um, this is one of the binders I created and you can see the URL the description and so forth for all of the site citing because if you use images and um, voice threads and all those things sometimes it gets confusing for the students to be able to um, cite how to cite the source so this is a great resource as well and um, Tina, if you want to walk through how they can collaborate and share users on a live binder through this one, I'll follow your steps. Okay. So uh, the first thing you do is go to your live binders account itself. And you would um, pick a binder that you want to collaborate, share with others to, to co edit with you. And what's nice about the collaboration feature that we've discovered is that. You don't have to send a binder to somebody by email. You can just basically, through this interface, put a binder on somebody's shelf automatically. Um, and and there is a editor. Hmm? I just started using this browser again, so I don't have the live binder it tool. I don't oh, think that's it's fine. a shortcut. You won't, you yeah, won't I do live binder it so I can save it very quickly. You can have that um, as a Firefox or a browser plug-in. But if I wanted to go to like my web conferencing, uh, um, how, how would I now add in okay. collaborators? Yeah, so you would go back to the MyBinders shelf because that's where the interface for collaboration is. So go back to the MyBinders, your library there. And if you click on op pick a binder that you want to have somebody collaborate with you on and click the options menu. Is it clicking all the way on the far left? I can't really see the screen. Maybe you could pick something on the right. Yeah. So click on collaborate. And you would have to put the email address that the live binder users that you're collaborating with use when they signed up. So it's very private. Um, so it, they need to be a live binders user and you need to know their their email address because that's how we know where to put the binder on their shelf. And if you want to send an email to them notifying them that you've made them a collaborator, you can use this interface. Uh, filling out their email address and their email address and then sending them a note. Otherwise, if you go directly to um, your My Binders account and you go to the top there and you click, you know where it says all? If you click on that drop down arrow and it says others shared, so all the binders that you've been requested as a collaborator will appear on that shelf. So whoever you shared the Classroom 2.0 live binder with will now have that binder on their shelf immediately so they can start working on it with you. And the other thing is you saw the live binder it tool that, that Kim brought up. It's a browser tool that lets you basically bookmark web pages into a binder directly from your toolbar. So that also will appear on the live binder it tool window. So that as you're browsing, if you wanted to add a link to somebody else's binder that you're a collaborator for, then then it will show you that interface and allow you to do it. 
And there's a question about would you combine binders for other teachers um, or have separate student accounts, separate um, teaching teachers? How do you recommend structuring? I know there's a variety of ways you could do it to fit your needs, but what's your recommendation? I think the, with collaboration now in place, I think everybody having their own account is probably the best way to go. And if you want to collaborate on one binder, you can invite these people to join you, even students, to work together on a single project uh, with one student being the owner or the teacher being the owner on a project on a particular binder. And that way, the students and the teachers have their own accounts that they can collaborate with other people on without having to share a login which is what it was done before the collaboration came, in, came into play. So I could take this binder and add it to my existing binder or a different one. So this link, this... Just uh, from the yeah. live binder, it... Um, right, so if you do the drop-down menu, all of your personal binders will appear, and then way at the bottom it'll say shared binders, and all the binders that you are a collaborator on will appear there, and so you just select it, and then you can add it in. So you can create just generic accounts, student one, student two, for those that are under 13, um, for that age limit. You could do that. You have to be careful that the username is not already taken, so you may want to put maybe the name of your account or some identification so that it makes it unique to yours. Yes, and Irene brought up you can use it without the email account so that you don't have to worry about the the COPPA and SIPA and all those different laws regarding data mining and so forth for student profiles. You can have a, um, as Vicki Davis calls it, a profile list profile for using with students. Mm -hmm. And you can just share the link with students or you can give them their own uh, set of accounts that filter through your uh, main account as well. So the only the only issue with that would be if they want to collaborate, we need the email account. We, we need an email identifier to to set it up in there. To be able to yeah. To share those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they come up with some kind of a, a coding that applies to the teacher that's monitoring them, that would be helpful. And send us an email if you if you need to do that. So we're on top of it for you. And are you uh, looking at when you copy a binder to your shelf, you're copying the version of that day. So if the original owner updates it, you're not going to be notified that it has been updated. So are you, is there that option in the future that when you copy it, it will automatically update or maybe send you notice that it has been updated so you can copy the latest version to your shelf? Yeah, so that is the... Oh, Barbara, is that you? I, I was just going to respond to that. That we are. That is what we're working on. We're working on a, a custom shelf so that you can copy other people's binder onto your shelf. And those are those would be the live binders, not just a static copy of that binder. And so those would, you know, you'd see the updated flag when those are updated. And um, we'd also have some sort of notification on that as well. So that is what we're working on. Okay. That would be fantastic so that um, it could update and you don't have to go back and physically manually copy those different things. That would be fantastic. But just the fact that you can copy them now as is and, and save them and, and use them and share them very easily. And in January, we moved from a GLAM link that we used to compile. We now use LiveBinders for all of our sessions. So um, this has been really great. And we love that you can update it later and add to it at any time, regardless of when it was created. I didn't know you guys were using it. That's great. Yeah, I mean, we do that for our knowledge sharing show as well. And, and, and like you said, it's nice because like for even for this binder, for this, this uh, show that we did, I'm going to go back and add comments to the binder links that we didn't get to so that people will know that these are different kinds of binders and stuff that I might have said before, I can now add to the binder. Whenever they open it, it will be there. And, and it's not used just with education, although there is a vast library of binders already created on 
uh, for the different educational topics, but there's also just general topics that people have created as well. You can see the, the great authors of the binders here in my bookshelf or binder shelf. But there's a lot to explore. Um, and we've given you some great links. And of course, our binder link that we share each week after the, the session just makes it easy that you don't have to worry about it changing each week. You know, we just keep adding to it, which is fantastic, and we love that. Are there any questions that we might have missed that we haven't addressed that you would like to ask? Before we uh, close up, I know people have to step away. And I know people are going to continue to go explore and create some live binders. We have a Deagle group, a Classroom 2.0 live Deagle group, and we do hope that you will share your binders that you've created through that Deagle group so that we can also um, explore and learn with you. And is there a limit on the number of collaborators? There's no limit. There's no limit as long as they have an email address that they can be added that way. And um, we would love to see the live binder examples that you create and then share those and help promote those. Digo group, um, I'll look it up, but you can just do a search at Digo for the Classroom 2.0 live group, not just the Classroom 2.0. That would take you to a different group. But we share that each week, and we also, um, on our website, have the, the resources that we share each week through the Live Binder link on the Archives tab. Uh, that one with all the permission tabs, I believe that one was a private one that you were sharing um, earlier, Tina. Was it private? That was um I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it was yesterday I got that was a little bit. Karen's, right? No, that was um somebody who wasn't speaking today. It was one of the ones I was gonna show. It okay. was uh Allison something I think, uh or Alicia. Okay. She created the field trip binder that had all the different permission slips that the teachers would need, like the the credit check on the parents and all those forms that needed to be filled out and which she put took the time to put it all in a binder. Is that what you were referring to, Don? Because she did a great job on that, and it's in the, the Classroom 2.0 binder, and I believe it's called Field Trip Explorations, something like that. Okay. We we can search, and but I know that we do have, uh, <laughs> yeah, I hear you end up about grading today. And Peggy, you can post in um, our live binder link as well in the chat, that would be great. So it yes, looks like so some of the questions are winding down. If Barbara and Tina, if you'd uh, like to put in your Twitter and your email addresses so people can email you with questions and ideas. Okay. Please well, the type that in the chat. Forward at livefinders.com and then um, I think we're known as okay. livefinders on Twitter. And then we have live binders on Facebook. <laughs> Super. So there are also, I've seen some great ones on different iPad apps for education, um, apps for the elementary grade levels for iPad apps and iTouch apps. Just anything that you can think of, I, I look through, there's something for everybody, and you can. Um, there are vast ways that you can use this that we haven't even touched on. Um, but like somebody mentioned, we do need to have a part two and, and so forth, especially as you add in the updating 